But the fact of the matter is, is that it's provable that Craig was, how I like to say it, he was in the room. He was there when this technology was uh, gestated, and there was a lot of other people working on it as well, uh, not only him. What up, what up, what up? Welcome back to the BitStocks podcast. We're back with episode nine now. So Cyrus Yari here, and I'm joined by... The usual, Stephen Arthur. And we're back at it, guys. There's a lot been going on, and it is CoinGeek Week in London. So we've got a special guest in town before we do introduce our very special guest. Just the usual stuff, guys. Please do not consider any of this as investment, financial, tax, legal, or any form of advice whatsoever. Uh, We just love this space, and we like to chop it up and talk about our passion really so that's pretty much it as usual you can catch us on youtube itunes spotify hit the likes give us any feedback hit the subscribe and bell notification on youtube and uh we'll roll in mate so today our special guest uh before uh you know we kick things off that i'd like to introduce is one and only calvin air calvin is the chairman of the air group and air media uh also that he owns coin geek which a huge uh, one of the big most prominent miners of the bch space and now he is a huge advocate of bsv backing n chain as well with craig wright with the whole mission which we are all huge supporters of and uh, also he is a very prominent philanthropist uh, with all of his work that he does through uh, the air foundation so coin geek week and we've got calvin in town uh, we're doing our huge bit stocks announcement on friday at coin geek at 2 p.m about our new ecosystem, new services and jurisdictions that we'll be expanding into. But it's a community that we love because we will share the same vision. And it's a pleasure to have you, Calvin. How are you, mate? Very good, thanks. Happy to be here. Great, great. Um, so for those who don't know really, because I mean, we know your background that you started off in, in 2000 with Bodog. Yeah, gaming, yeah. Great gaming and the progression that you saw in that industry. And then you got involved with cryptos. If I'm not mistaken, it was 2010. And then Correct. all the way beyond that, if you could give people a brief background of how you've got to hear uh, BCH and then SV, what, what's led you down this whole path? And for those who don't, because we have listeners of all backgrounds from beginners in the space to very advanced, and we have people with all sorts of views. So, Well, one of the things a lot of people have a misconception over is where Bitcoin comes from. It actually comes from the gaming space. It was actually the original team that put it together. Uh, we're solving the problem of people wanting to spend their money where they wanted to without having to ask permission of their governments. And that was actually the the original gestation. It was actually just a coincidence that the global economy collapsed at the same time that it, the product was ready for release. They were working on it for years before that. So uh, I was early interested in it because it was a theoretical solution for what I was dealing with in gaming at the time. And that's what was the original attraction for me. And uh, originally, I was actually just investing in in a few uh, startups. I didn't really jump in to the level that I'm at right now until I was introduced to Dr. Wright. And, uh, you know, he's a controversial uh, person in this space, uh, Mm -hmm. mostly because people who are challenged by his his, uh, deep, deep understanding of how the space works don't have the ability to argue with them at a technical or economic level. So instead that they turn it into a personal attack on Craig. And, and that's really unfortunate that that's the way this industry has evolved. But the fact of the matter is, is that it's provable that Craig was, how I like to say it, he was in the room. Yeah, He was there when this technology was gestated and there was a lot of other people working on it as well, not only him. Uh, so uh, when I was introduced to him, it was him that connected the dots in my brain of how all this stuff really worked. And that's when I, when the light bulb went off in my head about what could really be done with this technology. And, uh, that was in 2015. And since then I've been, uh, putting more and more of my self and my resources into this space. And uh, most recently I put my foot down and with the support of a number of other people, we decided that we had to defend Bitcoin and that's where Bitcoin SV came from. It is the original Bitcoin. Yeah, it's something we believe too. Um, we think BTC, um, the fake Bitcoin, is you know simply malign uh, to the whole ecosystem. Um, one of the things you said was um, Craig, and you referred to his accolades. He has accolades across a variety of different sectors, and that what is what makes it so great. He's able to pin certain things together like no other person sort of can. Um, I imagine he, um, you, and him work very very closely together, and I just wanted your sort of 
explanation on why you support the true Bitcoin, Bitcoin SV, and why you're not an ABC or a BTC supporter? Right. Well, it's because the economic model that's built in... Bitcoin was born an adult from an economic model perspective. It doesn't need to be tweaked. The A lot of people find all these crazy arguments like, well, Bitcoin had some bugs in the software. Well, the, the a lot in Bitcoin SV, the majority of the code of the original Bitcoin has been replaced with better code. But the what, what we wanted to preserve is the original economic model that was inside the technology. And that's what's important. And in order for in order for Bitcoin to see its true potential, uh, it's got to be treated the, similar to the way the, the internet was treated in the early days, where a bunch of people w- w- that had the influence got together and essentially locked down the base protocol and forced everybody, instead of constantly tweaking the base protocol so nobody could aim at anything solid, they put their energies into stabilizing it and, scale, and enabling it to scale. Sure. And all of these, the, the explosion of creativity that created all these big companies that Everybody knows today the Amazons and Googles and such of the world were all created on top of that stable base protocol. And the exact same thing has to happen here. We need to lock down the protocol and we do need to massively scale it. And only then will enterprise level investment be attracted into it. And only through that process can Bitcoin grow up and show it and conclusively prove its true potential. Yeah. I totally agree. Um, and in my, I mean, we were talking about this upstairs. In my opinion, in future, there will only be one chain, and that is BSV. I mean, as uh, sort of all this progression happens, as time goes on, and uh, the sort of block rewards halve every four years, um, and sort of miners essentially need an incentive to mine on the network and protect the network, and just for their own sake as well, their monetary incentive, as they're no longer getting these block rewards, uh, transaction fees. Uh, we'll sort of have to replace that. But in order to do that, we need massive scaling uh, in form of high volume of microtransactions, which is what you guys are aiming to achieve. And all the great news that's come out last week, if I'm not mistaken, it was uh, during stress testing period, 1,500 transactions per second, yeah. which was um, higher than the peak for Ethereum, Ripple, and BTC Segwit combined, uh, which is a fantastic achievement and things have not actually even kicked off yet and we think we can do a lot higher right now yeah as the technology sits exactly and then um in 12 months the aim is for handling sort of two gigabyte blocks and yeah. uh, i think that will be eight thousand transactions per second to be on par with the visa um all of these are fantastic and this is why some of the reasons why we're so passionate and huge supporters of bsv what do you think it will take uh, longer term beyond that as well for m- all the merchant adop- adoption and just generally mass adoption for people to really wake up to why you guys are doing this and how we can help educate the space. First, back to your first comment. Sure. Um, I also believe that there will only be one trustless public blockchain. There are other applications that are of a more centralized nature that I can see that could possibly survive in parallel. But just like there's no need for two internets, there is no need for two trustless decentralized public blockchains. And BSV is head and shoulders the superior technology right now. And unless, you know, as, as much as, as long as we can continue to stop people from hijacking it, it should theoretically take over everything simply because everybody will go there because it actually works. Back to your question about merchant adoption. Uh, I've wrestled with that a lot, and we have one day at the CoinGeek event, which is merchant adoption, but I actually think that merchant adoption is is a tough nut right now. Uh, you'll get some merchants that will adopt simply because they're enthusiastic about the technology, or in industries like gaming, where there's reasons why this technology is superior than what already exists, sure. from a um, ability to be uh, in charge of your own destiny. What I think is going to be the true driver of adoption from a consumer perspective won't be merchants as they exist today. I think the true driver is going to be unique business models that can take advantage of the low-cost, secure microtransaction ability of Bitcoin SV to create unique business models that don't exist. And that will be the driver that will cause people to get into the space because they can do something that actually was not possible historically. And that's what will get adoption out into the consumer masses. And that is when the compelling merchant argument comes in. 
to merchants that don't have a, a unique need for this type of technology or some kind of personal interest in it. And that's how I see it going. And so uh, one of the things that we're really pushing, and we have got one day dedicated to that, is, uh, is app development, either, either at the enterprise level or the startup, where uh, people can create these unique business models. And I think, and, but to do that, you need a stable platform that scales. Yeah. Exactly. So we're working on that first. That's where our energies are right now. And I think uh, we'll lock down the protocol, scale it massively in 2019, and you're going to see a Cambrian explosion of creativity, of unique business models that couldn't possibly exist without this technology. And that will be the seed that will grow into the tree of merchant adoption. Yeah, it's exactly that. We need the merchants to come in. Having said that, they do need stable foundations like you've correctly pointed out. So my sort of question to you, Calvin, is once we do get the merchants on board, we obviously need a good infrastructure. We need good services to offer these merchants. Tell us a little bit about what you do at CoinGeek and how you guys sort of aid that development. Right. Uh, well, one of the things we do, and actually it's, what, it's actually where I started in all this, I mentioned earlier on this uh, podcast, was uh, I, I actually was acting as a VC, investing in interesting startups in the space in the early days before I met Craig. And uh, I, I think that that's, once we get the protocol stable and get the scaling underway, and we don't have to be distracted by any wars with anybody else about that uh, direction, that strategic direction. I think we will return to our roots and we, we are going to be a major VC force in this space. And uh, I, I really look forward to working with Enchain and their massive patent portfolio, all that technology that they've got in spinning out projects. And of course, we're going to be strategic because what we need to do all startups aren't, aren't created equal, even if they're equally uh, creative and equally uh, interesting ideas. The reality is, is what this sector needs right now is startups that focus on solving problems that are in the usability area, like user interfaces, point of sale technology, things of that nature that makes it easier for people that have no interest in the plumbing. They just want something easy. Exactly. And it's, that's what we'll all yeah, be our Exactly. Focus. That is ease of use. It's having that sexy, sleek UI that enables myself as well as my grandmother to use it. That's when real adoption comes, um, retail and merchant. Um, so having said that, um, I know we are a little bit pressed for time. Is there yeah, there, there's just questions? a cu couple of other things really. So I mean, what, what you touched on, I'll, I'll give my thoughts. Um, I completely agree with what you said. And the issue currently is, as you've mentioned rightly on, you know, we watch your Twitter uh, we see what Craig posts as well on his medium, on his Twitter. We've watched all the activity. And as you guys rightly mentioned, the problem is that the market, pretty much in my view, 99.9% .9 of the market still needs educating. They see Bitcoin as a speculative asset. And to be a commodity ledger, uh, which is essentially secure and stable for businesses to use, they do need educating. Right now, if you know we scale it back, we've mentioned this time and time again on our podcast episodes. This is like a blip in the road. If we're because we're very, our vision is long term here at Bitstocks with everything. And we'll look back in 20 years, 30 years and be like, yeah, this, this was, I mean, the analogy people like to use or the comparison is internet in, in early to mid 90s. I think this is, this, this is even the time span that it will take is even longer than that. Uh, just because of so many different elements that are involved beyond merchant adop adoption, beyond education of the wider uh, market beyond all the regulation, all these different factors that will affect this, and for once disrupting uh, those sort of pillars of traditional uh, societal norms, and essentially that's what we're trying to move away from. And along with you guys, that's what we're aiming to educate the space on. Obviously, you touched on businesses uh, building uh, essentially and building on BSV and with BSV to move forward, and that's what Bitstocks are doing, which we'll be announcing at CoinGeek. But for those who are not too familiar, uh, what's all the big fuss about CoinGeek Week? In London. Well, uh, um, first, before I answer that question, I just want to yeah. touch on something else you yeah, mentioned. Yeah, sure. uh, I, I just want to point out that as painful as the hash war was and the consummate drop in coin prices, the good was going to come out of it. And one of the good things is that the hash war forced people to actually look at the technical merits of the two arguments of Bitcoin SV versus the ABC camp. And it would be impossible not to be looking at those two positions and not to extend that out to the entire cryptocurrency space. And I think that a lot of people have been educated on why Bitcoin SV makes sense. And I think that the, I don't know, fool's gold of value in BTC, 
where this whole argument that it's digital gold, which is a meaningless concept yeah. to me, I think that part of the reason the price is coming down is because people are saying, hold on, uh, BTC doesn't have utility and value comes from utility. And that's one of the points that we've been trying to drive home. And uh, I, I think that uh, massively scaling, creating utility will, and, and the transaction fees will create a healthy miner system. The miner, miners create security. And the whole concept of where your money is going to, your value will be more preserved is going to be where the miners are, which is going to be the, where the transactions are. And that's why the one chain will be, be dominant. And like, as I said before, there's a, a, at least room for centralized change as well. But uh, at least from the public space, I think it will be one dominant chain. Uh, Bitcoin Geek Week is here for us to, there was, it was put here originally because we thought we were going to be discussing a, a network upgrade. We didn't realize this whole hash war thing would happen. Uh, we've changed the positioning of it right now because uh, we were su successfully able to preserve Bitcoin in its original economic model, which is what we was our agenda all along. Uh, so this week really is going to be a whole bunch of things. It's going to be us talking about the future, but it's also going to be a celebration. It's a, a celebration of 10 years of this economic model and piece of technology being created. And it's a celebration of the fact that 10 years after it was first launched, we believe that we've got a pure version of it out again, able to show the world its true power. And uh, all the people here are along that same vein. And I, and I hope that uh, out of this comes a plan for us to come together as a industry. And I'm not talking about a crypto industry. I'm talking about an industry based on the Bitcoin economic model to create payment platform that can be used for the whole world and, and all the things that can, other things that can be done on top of it using the uh, token platform which we just launched and smart contracts and whatnot. So I think this is going to be about us looking ahead and celebrating 10 years plus the rebirth. And now let's see what it can do. Yeah. Amazing, amazing developments to come. Also, I know Craig doesn't like to divulge too much stuff um, as you're probably on that stance too, but um, I'm very, very excited about what, you know, Bitcoin, the true Bitcoin has to offer being Satoshi's vision. Um, and we're just thrilled to be a part of the journey. Yeah, and just to wrap up to leave FIFA with a thought, um, you just rightly touched on 10 years in the game. Uh, for 10 years in this space, we all believe that we've we've all spoken about before that we should be a lot further ahead than where Way we are further. in this space. Way further ahead. Mm -hmm. um, can you, I mean, can you just imagine 10 years ago, Craig sitting down, um, if, if he thinks back, what do you have expected? What we're seeing in the markets with thousands and thousands of projects, which yeah. rightly so, I mean, ICOs are there. That's a whole separate discussion. The SEC is going to be cracking down on a lot of projects on a lot of get rich quick schemes. In the end, as I said, so. yeah, rightly so. Mm -hmm. In the end, in my view, obviously, this is my opinion. Uh, again, we did say that at the start of the podcast. I think there will be one chain in the end, and that is BSV. Um, but rightly so, like we should be way further ahead. And can you just imagine 10 years ago thinking, I'm setting out to achieve this, set out in this white paper. And now we've deviated so far, we've completely gone off track. Um, and people are not aware of that. It's all about personal economic incentives. And, you know, um, some people just running off into the sunset. So it's time to put an end to that. The regulators are waking up. And uh, that is why we support BSV, which is essentially, it's in the name. We don't need to tell you anymore. Um, but you can do your research on it. I mean, some people are just on the last episode, we discussed the hash war. You know, it was almost a two hour episode, which we won't go into at all. But essentially, some of the comments were things like, who is funding you guys bit stocks? Is it Calvin or <laughs> Air Media? It's like, <laughs> no, we do our own research. We Literally, it's, it goes back to proof of work, which is what, what it's all it's all in the game. Do your research, put the work in, put the yeah. effort in, and you'll find out all angles for yourself and come up with your own judgment. That's why we are supportive of BSV. This is the first time I've met Calvin and first time you met Calvin, but it's because we do our own research. Do your due diligence and you'll reach a conclusion. I like to think of people like you guys are funded by logic <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to whatever else is like driving the so. rest of them. <laughs> Um, but on that note, guys, so Calvin, it's been an absolute pleasure having you. Um, we're looking forward to, I know today is the Miners Day Coin Geek, um, but this week there will be all sorts of other stuff kicking off. And on Friday, which we discussed, is the big BitStocks announcement at 2 p.m., uh, which, guys, I know we've said this on every podcast, every vlog for like the last two months. We're buzzing. Uh, we're, we're trying to contain our excitement, but all the work we've been doing, our prospectus teaser is actually ready. It will be released shortly uh, once the announcement has been made, the press release at CoinGeek. And from there, it's just go, go, go. So um, keep your eyes peeled. And I, think I have one pitch to give at the end. 
Sorry? I have a pitch to give. Oh, you have a pitch? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Just before you give your pitch, I'm, I'm going to do a little CoinGeek pitch as well, uh, which I was getting on to. CoinGeekWeek.com. I think there may be just a few tickets left. If you're lucky, you can get, get yourself some tickets. Go check it out, guys. And um, yeah, uh, Calvin. I'm hosting a party at the end of the event. It's going to be a celebration of 10 years of Bitcoin and a celebration of rebirth. And I can guarantee you it will be the best party ever witnessed in the cryptocurrency industry. Yeah. My word. I was at the last one and I can testify for Calvin. They are pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you'll be there. I'll be there. William, creative director behind the camera. Shout out to his amazing work. He'll be there as well. Uh, but keep an eye out for the vlog as well this week, guys. It will be a delayed vlog because of the CoinGeek activity in the weekend. And it will be releasing it by the end of the week. So uh, Saturday or Sunday, the vlog will go up. But pleasure having Calvin. It's going to be a fantastic week at CoinGeek. Uh, and yeah, you can catch us, as I said, on iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube, and we'll catch you on the next episode, guys. So peace. Cheers.